Hey there, this is Pam Perry. So welcome to Pam Perry's Pick. Today, we're going to have Cena Barnes on today, and she's going to be talking about her new books, Grieving to Heal and The Recondition. But before we get started, I kind of want to play something a little bit kind of special for you because I'm celebrating 24 years in business, and it is kind of cool to, uh, to, to say that. And then you think like, oh man, you know, she's 24 years in business, so she's kind of like, She's probably like old school. Well, no, 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 no. I got something for you. Watch this. Nick, Nack, Patty, Black, give a dog a bone with Pam Perry PR. 24 years strong. She know the do's and don'ts. 24 years stepping over traps. Smash and click bait so you stay on track. She still got game, world-class PR. Going hard in the paint for beginners and saints. Check it. Pound her in PR, making all the moves, working her magic so you don't lose. Pound Perry, making your dreams come true. She know what to do. 24 years in the game, put some respect on her name. 24 years in the game, put some respect on her name. We got mad love for Pound Perry PR. Keep doing your thing, you know what I mean. Bye, that, do your thing. So that is my theme song. Thanks to my creative director, Bob Ivory. So we're going to get into Pam Perry's picks right after this. And I'm bringing up Cena Barnes. All right, so now we're bringing up Cena Barnes. There you are. Welcome, welcome. Good to have hey, you. Hey, thanks for having me. <laughs> I've been looking forward to this all week, so thanks for having me. Good. So we're going to talk about your books today. We're going to talk about Grieving to Heal, and we're going to talk about Recondition. We're on Amazon Live right now, so you can actually get these books too. The link is right there, so you can actually pick it up. But I want you to kind of give us a little bit, uh, just a little bit of your backstory. Um, everybody always has a, a reason why they write a particular book. And I want you to kind of give us the background about why each book came about. But before we do that, you have a lot of initials and letters behind your name. Okay. So <laughs> give, us, give us what that is about because we need to know what those are. So tell us what those are. Absolutely. So the M.E.D. represents my master's in education. I have um, 20 years experience in education, so I definitely have a master's degree in it. And then the C.H.R.C. represents I'm a certified human rights consultant. Oh, OK. So, OK. So certified human rights consultant. I did not realize that. So what does that mean exactly? We know what the master's in education I kind of get that. Mm -hmm. But what is a human rights consultant? What kind of work does that entail? So um, as a certified human rights consultant, um, again, I work with a lot of survivors of trauma um, and things of that nature. So that allows me to do whole special trainings just about social justice, human rights and things of that nature. And it allows me to provide and disseminate information out that others may not have um, be privy to. Wow. OK, I love that. So. 2020 people were really talking a lot about human rights and and all of the the social justice when did you get that particular certification i guess you would say what year dead smack in the middle of COVID. dead smack okay. in the middle of COVID. i realized during that time i've already been doing the work but i realized during that time there was really a need and there was a lot of people who um didn't have certain information and i wanted to be able to provide them with that information. And of course, it's very important when you're a woman of color to make sure that you have the qualifications to back you up. And so I became certified in it. I love that. And so which book actually came first? So between the recondition and the um, the, the uh, grieving to heal, which one came first? So grieving to heal came first. This one here. Oh, this, this one no. here. Okay. That one here, yeah. That one, that one came first. I love this cover. I really do. And so give us a background about the shadow, 
boarding experience and what that really means, the shadow boarding experience? Um, that's a great question. So the shadow boarding experience is all about taking you through the journey. Journey. Many of many individuals are familiar with vision boards, and however, the shadow board it helps you to shed the things that you may have been carrying from your past that will allow you to step into your future and begin your journey to move forward. So that's why it's called the shadow boarding experience. Uh, and then the grieving to heal title is all about learning how to grieve both the living and the dead. Mm. And so give us the, the background, because I know a little bit of background about why this came about and talk about your nephew. Right. So Grievance of Hill came about when I first originally started, I was going through the process of mourning my nephew, um, who was murdered four days after his 27th birthday. And so that was due to gun violence. And I was really just trying to make sense of everything that my family and I were going through. Uh, but then a few years later, I was diagnosed with uh, a pulmonary fibrosis, which is my lungs are hard. And then so I need a double lung transplant. And, and then I needed to learn how to grieve myself or the living. Mm -hmm. It's grieving. You're going in a little bit, but really the whole part of the whole grief recovery process or just even the way things you used to be because you said you were exercising, you know, three or four times a week. You were doing things. I mean, you know, so now all of a sudden you have this diagnosis where you're, the loss of the mobility that you had is gone. And so besides, you know, losing your son, and your son, I say your son, but your nephew's son, you know, was your sister's son. Um, and mm -hmm. then you started a foundation in his honor. And also, too, he was in college and you also spearheaded. Again, you're using a lot of the the things because education is your background and and, and you right. had a uh, a way of of having a law so talk about how that law was passed in uh, in new york right so um during that during that process my sister was trying to get the postponement degree from the college that he was attending um, just so that we can have something of other than the death certificate, um, and to show his legacy that he was on the right track and was doing the right things. However, the school was not willing to mm -hmm. provide uh, um, provide the family with that. So my sister and I went on this journey to, you know what, instead of fighting for just for him, we wanted to create something that all families who are experiencing something like that will be able to get. And so we came up with Mel's Law, which will have colleges or universities provide the families with a postponement degree where they waive the they waive all credits as long as the um the student is in good standard and that family can receive that postponement degree. I love that. That is that is one of the things that you did that not just helped you, you know, heal grieving to heal, but also to other families as well. So COVID, certified social justice. Uh, you're living in the Bronx, Brooklyn. I always get them confused. Brooklyn. I'm in Brooklyn. I'm in Brooklyn, New York. In Brooklyn. And all of that's going on because New York was a hot spot of all of that. And then you're diagnosed with this as well, which is a lung disease. COVID is also a lung disease. So all this is going on. So when did this come into place, the recondition? Okay, so the recondition came into place in the middle of me going through and trying to understand this whole new purpose that I have. Um, I really needed to know, get an understanding of who was I now, right? I was no longer this person uh, that had all this mobility and independency that I was used to having. So I needed to figure out what does that look like? And that made me think about loving myself throughout that trauma. Like mm -hmm. this traumatic, traumatic thing happened, but what happens when you, you feel a sense like you lost who you are? And I recognized that I had to not only be that person that was experiencing that. And so that's what it came about, the recondition of God to loving yourself through the trauma, because it teaches you how to navigate through your thoughts, feelings, and emotions so that you can recondition your brain or your mindset so that you um, can see in other another side to your situation. I love that. And so I'm going to read some of the 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 
the chapters of the book, the book titles, the part one is trauma is real. And so Mm -hmm. I hear a lot of times about trauma. You yourself have been um, a victim of um, domestic violence and gun gun violence as well. Mm -hmm. So the gun violence is the survival of my nephew, my nephew being murdered um, to gun violence. Yes. And then, and, and all of that. And so all those are trauma things Mm -hmm. that um, affect you mentally emotionally, physically, it's just just the, spiritually, the whole thing. So you really talk about trauma and really those chapters of building yourself from the inside out. And then mm-hmm. chapter two, the power of your thoughts, which is so important. And then understanding your emotions. So that's just the part one. And then part two, you talk about the mm-hmm. evolving mind. So can I ask you, Zena, if you had during the, the trauma that you had, did uh, the education help? Did therapy help? psychologist, psychiatrist, medication? I mean, what are some of the things that you did um, to recondition? So it was a little bit of all of it, right? There was no okay. one one method that works. I need, I, I went to therapy. Mm-hmm. I went to therapy. I got a, I got a psychiatrist because I needed, I needed medication to be able to make it from day to day because my mm-hmm. mind, I was going down this rabbit hole, right? And who knows what to do with the, all those thoughts and feelings when you're living in the trauma, right? So of course I had a psychiatrist, but then my background in education opened up doors and and strategies and tools to me that other people may not have. And so what I did was I utilized my experience to craft this book in a way that is teachable and it helps others navigate through it without feeling full of jargon, full of psychology jargon, where it's like, I don't know what this means, and I need a dictionary to help me understand and unpack this chapter. Mm -hmm. It's really written in layman's terms, so it's an easy tool that um, individuals feel comfortable using. Mm -hmm. And and part of being an educator is putting things in curriculum, putting things in sequence and Mm -hmm. steps, Uh, knowing how to translate information so that it's not just information, but it's knowledge that is really applied, the wisdom that people can have to get it. And so one of the things, um, the coaching part. So we go from, you know, being certified, uh, doing doing that and the master's degree in education. So now you're known as Coach Barnes. The books are, you know, Coach Barnes. That is is it. So what is it that, primarily Coach Barnes, so what is it primarily that you're coaching on? Is it trauma? Is it grief? Is it um, what are some of the main areas that you're you're focusing on now in terms of coaching on? Okay, so to be honest, mm-hmm. right, right. So it's all mental wellness, right? So to be honest, mm-hmm. once you experience some form of trauma, it trickles throughout your life to where it is mental wellness. It is your ability to work functionable and be productive at work. So that's leadership. And then there's also that sense of identity and understanding who you are so that you can navigate through those thoughts, feelings, and emotions. And so instead of, um, I, I, I went to the name Coach Bonds, one, because it took away that anxiety of, oh, I'm dealing with someone whose background is in psychology. A lot of, right. Often, many people, once they hear psychology, it's like, oh, no, I don't need that, Um, you know, and they get scared, they get scared, they get scared of it, right? So the coach, sure. coach it kind of softens, it kind of softens it, and it allows people to feel like, okay, this is something manageable. It's baby steps, it's manageable. So you'll still get all the tools and the access to the thing that you would get if you was to go to therapy. It's just that you're doing it with a coach who's going you through step by step of the things that you need to do. I like that. That is so true. Uh, why do you think a lot of people don't like going to therapy or a psychologist or a psychiatrist? What is the what is the stigma? I mean, if we're sick, we're gonna go to the doctor. If we if we <laughs> have, have a toothache, I'm gonna go to the dentist. What what is the thing that keeps and I'm going to say this, especially black people from mm-hmm. going to, <laughs> to going to, to seek out therapy. Coaching sounds a little bit softer, but you're still really giving someone some insight onto the mental wellness. Mm-hmm. What is, what do you think the main stigma is? The main stigma 
it falls within the lines of generational conditioning, right? For generations, we were told as as people of color, we were told like, um, you push through resilience, you'll be all right. Then someone's always going through something worse than what you're going through. So you learn to stuff your feelings down and you never were really taught how to deal with your trauma. And so there was, there was this, there was, there was this stigma of shame that if you were dealing with some type of mental illness or you needed some type of support for, um, for anxiety or depression, that something was wrong with you. And so for me, I'm breaking those generational cycles of trauma by offering something different. I'm offering tools and strategies that teach people how to love themselves through that trauma to remove that shame. Mm -hmm. It is. It is a lot of times where someone feels so depressed or to the point where you feel suicidal or you're so depressed where you can't uh, function day to day or you're so you're so depressed or you have such mental issues where you're relying on other substances, whether it's alcohol or prescription mm-hmm. drugs or just drugs, period. And so really that whole thing about stuffing it down, you shouldn't. Or if you're in the church, it's like, well, just pray about it. Your faith isn't strong enough. You should be able to get over that. And I think that's probably a lot with a lot of African Americans. They feel like, okay, if you go to church and you pray and you know, know Jesus and you, mm-hmm. mentally you be okay and that's not true because there's there's they create the same thing if you were sick there are doctors here for a reason to help you get better even though i may have faith i I still may have a broken leg okay so i still need to see a doctor so that part right there is really the thing that 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 helps and writing the books really when someone um loses someone traumatic like that they a young young african-american male to to gun violence there's just no words really that that you can say to anyone when they are grieving and sometimes Mm -hmm. people will try to say things that you know make you feel better but they make you feel worse or someone will give you a book that's so thick and you can't really focus so when someone is experiencing trauma based on someone who like in an accident especially gun violence that's so so i had another guest on um the other day who um tyrese she's out of washington dc she lost her daughter to gun violence so what are some of the things that a person can do when they know someone is experiencing that type of grief or trauma what can a a person do like a lay person could do i know obviously hug them pray with them but Mm -hmm. what kind of things can they say or do or recommend that they do um so i recommend Mm -hmm. not saying the typical things that we were taught like uh everything happens for a reason um Ooh. that's a trigger for someone oh who's experiencing yes. a loss like there's, oh there's no God. reason that there's no reason that i can make sense of this right um but that's something that we were taught is like you know have faith everything happens for a reason um mm. you'll you'll find the blessing in it later so those are those are some of the common things that people tend to no. say that they should try to stay away from i would definitely mm. say learning how to listen and provide a space for that person to feel what they're feeling. Uh, As humans, we often try to stop someone from crying or we just want to make them feel better. So it's like, no, 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 don't cry. But sometimes they need to cry. Sometimes they need need to get that out. And the best Mm -hmm. thing that you can do is just provide that space to let it happen and just let them know like, listen, I don't have the words but I'm here for you. And that's Mm. what they need to hear. There are no Mm. words that can make this easier or feel better for you, but I am here for you should you Mm. need me and you you need someone to talk to. That is good because a lot of times when we see people crying, we do try to, um, we comfort them, but it's almost like we try to get them to stop crying. And I always say that no one's gonna die from crying you know, just let them cry. They, they'll be okay. They won't break from crying too much. That you know, obviously, we don't want them to hurt themselves from you know from crying if they're mm-hmm. wailing and crying or things like that. But that is so true because even in church, when people quote unquote get happy in church, one of the things that that would happen, and in, in spe- especially like in different churches, depends on denomination, the nurse <laughs> will run over to the person try to get them to stop. And it's like, but they are getting happy. Why are you trying to stop them? In certain churches, certain denominations will let you go. They'll let you run or whatever. But certain denominations, like, no, 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 that's that's just too that's too much. But 
we do what you're saying is that people need to express the feelings, feel the feelings and work mm -hmm. through them. And then your books will and help the reality, mm -hmm. the reality mm -hmm. of it is people try to stop you from crying because it makes them uncomfortable. Ah, so the yeah, moment, the moment that that per the other person becomes uncomfortable, it's like, whoa, no, I didn't, I didn't mean for this to happen. Hold on. How do I stop? this how do i get you to a space that where i'm kind and comfortable mm -hmm. again and people mm -hmm. that are, are grieving often feel that and that makes them feel worse and then they feel like you know what you're not somebody i can turn to so then they start to hold those things in and it's not helpful so you mm -hmm. want to make sure that if you're going to be that person you have to make sure that you're comfortable with being around someone when they're crying. Because if that is not your ministry, if that is not something that you're comfortable with doing, do not opt in to be that person. That's true. That that is that is that is where Letitia, Dr. Latish Nicole is with us right now. She's she's giving us some <laughs> some feedback as well. That is so true. If that is not your ministry, do not be the one that go over to the house. <laughs> You know, as soon as you hear that someone's past, it's like, okay, maybe you're not the one to go there because you, you need to do something else, you know, but, you know, help organize behind the scenes, but not, not the one. Because I saw, um, I think it was a video not too long ago where someone was crying at a funeral and they were really, really crying. And then a lot of people were stepping back. And then there was one person that was there just kind of like walking up to them, helping them to go through, you know, crying and just, you know, giving them tissue and, and that kind of thing. But the other people were just stepping back. And it is, if it bothers them, if they're not comfortable with it, then yes, be, don't, don't allow the other person who's grieving to not work through the stages because I think right. it's, is it eight stages of grieving, seven stages? I think they. It's, so there's, 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 there's seven stages. There's seven stages seven of grief. Stages. Um, but mm -hmm. you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm working on, I'm working on some stages for the people, for the, um, the, the grief supporters, right? Because I feel like the grief supporters need their own stages. They need their own, okay. own stages so they can know where they fit in at. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So someone, I know one of the stages of grief, when you're talking about grieving to heal, one of the stages is denial, um, anger. Um, and I think a lot of people stay in anger for a long time. And that probably does the, the main one that does lead to a lot of depression because mm -hmm. a per, person is anger. In terms of the stages, you help people go through the different stages as well, or the book will help people um, actually go through the stages and and know how to, I guess you would say, you never really, we talked about this the other day, you never really get over someone's death. It's like, oh, you're going to get over it. No, you never really get over right. it, but you, you learn how to, uh, I guess you would say, what's the word, manage it or you know, at any, it, it, it could be a trigger. Every holiday could be a trigger for someone where they're going to go ebb and flow. So kind of give us a little bit of what people can expect out of the book. And we want them to click the link and get it on Amazon. Awesome. I mean, I'm glad you brought that up. So the book actually talks about that. It, tell, it goes through the different stages of grief. Um, it also sheds a light on how you, everyone's thoughts at a different place. So mm -hmm. not everyone, like grief is not a step one, two, three, like it doesn't happen that way. It depends ah. on where you are in grief. Um, some people, start in the stage of denial some people start in the stage of anger some people start in the stage of, of forgiveness uh, each person is at their own different level because grief hits us all differently and what mm. is so great about the book is that it allows you to work through your process at your speed Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. it gives you different activities, no matter which stage you are, there are activities within the shadow board and experience that will allow you to get a better understanding of what you're feeling and mm -hmm. how you get and how you navigate through your thoughts, feelings and emotions during that, that particular stage. And so there are examples in there because I share my experience to help you get along through to give you an idea. So it's not like you just pick up this book and then you just do this work. There's mm -hmm. tips in there, there's strategies and there's real life examples within the book to help someone get along. I like this one part where it talks about grief recovery roadblocks worksheet. It says sometimes things were left unsaid or issues not resolved before the loss of your loved one. These can make it more difficult to move forward in the recovery process. So you ask the question for them to fill out. Um, mm -hmm. What would you like to say if you could speak with your loved one again? 
And then the other question is, what unresolved issues do you have that need to be addressed to be at peace? And it's like a journal in a way. Mm-hmm. And though, you know, it's, it's what, and then it says, if it will be helpful to write a letter expressing your feelings and thoughts, read it aloud to yourself, another person, or even an empty chair. I right. like that. That is because they're gone. And so it's like, okay, so how can you, how can you recover? How can you kind of like close the hoop, the loop on that? And then it just really just talks about, you know, self-awareness. Uh, it's a really reflective book, you know, down here and talking about the triggers and that, like I said, like I was saying, like when someone dies, you know, someone says, oh, you know, it's a blessing, you know, you never know you, what the, what, if there's a timing for everything. You know, people just say crazy things. And, and, and I always mm-hmm. say, don't know what to say don't say anything don't say anything right. crazy to someone after after a loss because it's going to be a trigger and you you don't they don't mean it intentionally but the it, it's almost like a human emotion to want to say something like you know like you're going to be wise and give them these words of wisdom there's nothing to say you know when mm-hmm. someone it's that uncomfortability you. with it's that uncomfortability with silence so mm-hmm. a lot of a lot of the times people are uncomfortable with silence so they're uncomfortable with crying and they're uncomfortable with silence and they feel mm-hmm. like okay neither one of us is saying that i must say something um you know there's a time and a place for everything. Or, you know, sometimes these things happen. Um, you're, you're figuring it out or you'll get over it soon. And how can mm-hmm. you ever get over the loss, especially yeah. a loss of a child or, yeah. or a husband, yeah. a wife, a mother, a father? Like, you don't get over right. those things. You may learn how to, you may learn how to navigate differently. Or I like to say you may um, get to understand the new rhythm of your heartbeat, but you don't get over it. I like that. The new rhythm of your heartbeat. That is so true. That is so good. I love these books. These are, I want everybody to get them because they really will help. help. The, the thinner the book is, the better it is. Because sometimes when you're in a point of you're, you're, you're going through transition, a really, really thick book can be overwhelming. Um, mm-hmm. I remember my mom, when she was alive, she, she passed in 2019 and she had dementia. And dementia, Alzheimer's, whatever, you know, anyway, it was just a mental thing of, and uh, someone gave me a book. It was called the 36 hour day. The book was this thick. I says, you know what I'm going through right now. I do not need all that information. The book was this thick. And then I gave right. it to my dad and he was like, Ooh, I can't, I can't. It's like the book was, the book was a trigger. Mm-hmm. I was like, it was just too thick. I needed something simple. And so for caregivers who are going through things too, even though my mother was still with me, I was grieving the loss of her the way she was. That was, the, mm-hmm. you know, so it kind of called dementia or Alzheimer's like a slow death because they're still there, but they're not there because it's it's a slow process. Anyway, it's a, it's a whole thing. So the only book that I could really read was almost like a picture book of quotes mm-hmm. things that were soothing, things that, that, that were speaking to me like they understood. So, I mean, literally, it was probably maybe 20 words on a page. And that's what I could read because I couldn't really process anything else too thick. I didn't need to go through a course. I needed right. just somebody to <laughs> And so that, so I really, really appreciate that. So what is next on your agenda? I have your, your website down there. What can people find when they go to cnotebarns.com? So when they go to the website, they can also find links to the books. They can find link, links to my speaking reels. Um, I, I offer a lot of words of encouragement um, just in case sometimes, sometimes you just going in out a little bit mm-hmm. but yeah know that someone is there and someone has been something that do so I'll- and she was recently too um i'll put the link in the uh description of the show box she was recently in the women's journal as well talking about her story as well celebrating women's history month so thank you so much for the work that you're doing the males law and all of that as well and the work with the foundation as well so i want people to go to your website check it out dr letitia nicole she sounds like she might be a great guest for you to have on your podcast as well but thank you so much on amazon live and we're also on youtube and also in chocolate pages too on facebook so that's probably where letitia is too chocolate pages is like books that you can eat them that's kind of like what that comes from so <laughs> thank you so much for joining awesome. us today. awesome thank you right, um bye-bye. thanks for having me 
Oh, okay. it was great. It was great. So she is wonderful. I want you to go to Amazon, get the book, and then also go to her website and connect with her and get on her email list. She's going to have more and more events coming up. And also, too, she is also part of our community, too, Ready, Set, Go, Speak. So I keep in touch with her, and she's just got booked on a couple of speaking gigs, and she's got a lot of stuff going on. So you'll be hearing more from this young lady because she is really doing the thing. So I'm Pam Perry, and I'm out of here. Thank you so much. Follow, subscribe, and share, and I will talk to you soon. Take care.